Hey, good morning, all of you. How are you all? Welcome back to your social studies virtual classroom. Today we are going to continue with our geography chapter three, motions of the earth. So in our previous class we have studied one motion that is rotation of the earth. Today in this module we are going to study another motion of the earth that is revolution in detail. Okay, so please listen to this video very carefully. And before starting, let me once again remind you to please like and subscribe to. my channel and you can share this video also with your friends so let's start so in our previous class we have started about rotation today we are going to cover the revolution of the earth so please refer to page number 104 to 107 revolution of the earth the earth while rotating on its axis also revolves around the sun so you can see in the image it is continuously revolving or moving around the sun this motion of the earth is called revolution the earth revolves around the sun from west to east the speed of the earth's revolution is about 30 km per second so it is speed is 30 30 km per second it covers 30 km in 1 second so the time taken to cover one revolution around the sun is 365 days 5 hours 48 minutes and 56 seconds so it takes a whole year to complete one revolution that is why revolution is also called annual motion of the earth and we have already studied rotation is called the daily motion of the earth so for our convenience we count only 365 days in a year the balance of about 6 hours is added means 6 hours from fund first year then 6 hours from second year 6 hours from third year and 6 hours from fourth year when we will add these 4 6 hours it will form 24 hours which also means one day so this additional day is added to the month of february in that year thus february has 29 days and that year has 366 days such a year you know is called a leap year and that extra day in the month of february is called a leap day okay so this is how a leap year is formed so the path along which the earth revolves around the sun is called the orbit which is fixed the length of the orbit is 965 million kilometer and the shape of the orbit is oval or elliptical since the orbit is oval and the sun occupies only one focus of the eclipse so the distance between the earth and the sun varies throughout the year okay so the, the distance is never equal since it occupies one focus and earth is revolving so the distance keeps on changing so when the distance between the earth and the sun is minimum about 146 million kilometer the earth is said to be the be in perihelion means it is near to the sun and this position is basically seen on 4th january every year and when the distance between the earth and the sun is maximum about 151 million kilometer the earth is said to be in aphelion means far away from the sun and this position is mostly seen on 4th july so for our convenience we have kept one average distance between the earth and the sun and that is 148.5 million kilometer now let us learn about some effects of the earth's revolution so this revolution of the earth around the sun causes variation in the length of day and night so this variation results in the distribution of heat over the surface of the earth 
and because of this distribution different seasons can be seen on the earth the phenomenon of seasons or the different phases of season is the most important effect of the earth's revolution now we all know that earth completes one revolution around the sun in 365 days or one year so these this period these 365 days or one year is divided into four main seasons the spring summer autumn and winter these changes of season is due to three main reasons first one the rotation of the earth on its axis means the rotation then second one the revolution of the earth around the sun then third one the inclination of the earth's axis you already have know that we have studied that earth axis is inclined towards the north direction so these are the three main reasons behind the change of seasons now in this image you can see the movement of the earth around the sun and you can see the four positions are given position 1 2 3 and 4 these positions show the earth on four selected days you can see that is 21st march first position at 21st march second at 22nd june third one at 23rd september and fourth one at 22nd december now you can see that position 2 and 4 are called solstices and positions 1 and 3 are called equinoxes now let us understand these terms in detail a solstice is the day when the midday sun shines vertically over at one of the tropics means the rays of the sun are vertically falling over the tropic of cancer or over the tropic of capricorn and equinox is the day when the midday sun shines vertically overhead at the equator okay it shines vertically over at the equator so equator will receive all the sunlight during that time now these are some points of differences between solstice and equinox so that this topic will be more clear to you so when the sun shines vertically over at one of the tropics it is called a day solstice day and when the sun shines over the equator it causes equinox length of days are longer than nights in solstice and length of days and nights are equal in equinox during solstice this position of the earth causes the summer and winter seasons and during the equinox this position of the earth causes the spring and autumn season so this is how the seasons are caused let us understand these in more detail so the first one that is the summer solstice at 21st june so during this time you can see in the image also the north pole is inclined towards the sun while the south pole is away from the sun so the rays of the sun fall are falling vertically over the tropic of cancer that is why a larger portion of the northern hemisphere gets heat and light from the sun and the southern hemisphere will remain in the darkness so the days are longer than nights in northern hemisphere and the places which are located in northern hemisphere will experience summer season this means that 21st june will have the longest day and the shortest night in northern hemisphere 
नेक्स्ट वन इज द विंटर सोलिस्टिस ऑन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड डिसम्बर ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम द साउथ पोल इज इनक्लाइन टूवर्ड्स द सन वाइल द नॉर्थ पोल इज अवे फ्रॉम द सन सो दिस इज बेसिकली ऑपोजिट ऑफ वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड इन द समर सोलिस्टिस हेयर द रेज आर फॉलोइंग ऑन द ट्रॉपिक ऑफ कैप्रिकॉन सो अ लार्ज पोर्सन ऑफ सदर्न हेमिसफेयर इज रिसीविंग हीट एंड लाइट फ्रॉम द सन एट दिस टाइम सो द डेज आर लॉन्गर दैन नाइट्स इन सदर्न हेमिसफेयर प्लेस इन सदर्न हेमिसफेयर विल एक्सपीरियंस समर सीजन एंड ट्वेंटी सेकेंड डिसम्बर विल हैव द लॉन्गेस्ट डे एंड द शॉर्टेस्ट नाइट इन सदर्न हेमिसफेयर सो एट द टाइम दीज सिचुएश दीज एविडेंसेज और दीज करेक्टरिस्टिक्स आर टोटली ऑपोजिट फ्रॉम वट वी हैव स्टडेड इन समर सोलिस्टिस now the spring and autumn equinoxes okay on 21st march and 23rd september the rays of the sun fall vertically on the equator you can see in the image also so the north pole and south pole both lie at the equal distance from the sun so days and nights are equal of equal duration okay throughout the world and the temperature is neither very hot nor very cold in both the hemispheres and in the northern hemisphere experiences spring season from 21 march and autumn season from 23rd september this is totally reverse in the southern hemisphere okay so these are the solstices and the equinoxes in detail so now i hope this concept of the phenomenon of seasons is clear to you all now let us discuss one more important thing now our, our concepts of rotation and revolution are clear now we have studied both the movements in detail now we are going to differentiate between the two so for what, what is the first difference the definition the movement of the earth on its axis is called rotation and the movement of the earth around the sun is called revolution second difference time taken or in rotation it take 24 hours and in revolution it takes 365 days that is why it is also called daily motion and revolution is also called annual motion now what it causes rotation causes the change of day and night and revolution causes the change of season so these are the main important point of differences between rotation and revolution with this difference now our chapter is completed i hope this whole concept or this whole chapter of motions of the earth two movements of the earth rotation and revolution is clear to you now now this is the home task that i have prepared for you you have to do these questions in your notebook and if you have any query you can write in the comment box but do mention your name and section or you can also ask in the next webex classes okay students so take good care of yourselves thank you for watching students